John from Optics EQ. I get a lot of questions uh, from clients and a lot of emails about how to use Optics Plot and Optics Notes. And I think the best way to kind of address those questions is to actually go through examples. I'm going to take race six on Wednesday at Gulfstream Park. You also can go to our website at opticseq.com. There's lots of videos and information there. And also, uh, Emily Gullickson does a race of the day analysis on Thursday through Sunday, which is great because it's not just about picking horses. It's more about kind of educating and answering the question of how do I use this and how do I interpret the data. So Optics EQ is just a you know, set of uh, analytical tools. Again, we have plot. And uh, what we're trying to do is get you to think really outside the box. We take the grunt work out. We don't you know, take all that run line information and try to make it visual for you so that uh, things can pop out at you. And then uh, you can spend more time using that uh, great algorithm, the human brain. So we're going to start with uh, this race at Gulfstream by looking at the header. You can see the plot fit is a light green. Uh, that means it's good. You know, fits kind of our model you know, of races that are more predictable. Contention is a sun, which means it's there's some contention, but we don't anticipate like a flame where there's been a lot of horses bunched up fighting for the early lead. And then the speed rating is 50, which is high, uh, which means it anticipates the pace to the second call probably is going to be fast. And if you just visually look at the plot, you see the seven and the eight here, well ab above the par line. Okay, again, the par line is the how fast horses run to the second call on average for this class of level. So they're going to be well above that. And then you got the rest of the field kind of hovered around the par line, but off all the way to the right, and some even well below, like the five. So what you're looking at here is, you know, two horses that are going to want to go for the lead, uh, going to battle for the lead, and the rest of the field is going to kind of, kind of figure out what they want to do in terms behind them. So first thing I want to look at is optics RPM, and that's where we get the run styles of horses. And again, it's important. We did a video last week about matching run styles to the way horses are plotted. It's just like fighters, you know, when, when fighters had, uh, have different styles and they face fighters, you know, whose style either suits them or doesn't. That's what we're looking for here in terms of, you know, run styles and versus the horses the way a horse plots. So in this case, you have two horses, the seven and eight, who really want to go for the lead. If just one of these horses was in this race, this would be an easy race and, you know, you'd kind of be done with it because, you know, the seven or eight would be up there and the rest of the field would be, you know, in quadrant four. But in this case, they get each other and they're both run style is they want to go to the front. So let's go to the grid and kind of drill down in each of these horses a little bit more closely. We'll start with the morning line favorite, which is Coronado again at eight to five. And you can see that this horse is dropping significantly in class. Um, but the only thing is, when you see the numbers here versus kind of the optics fig range, it doesn't look as big as a class drop. It looks like it's actually the same. So that's interesting to see. Uh, you can see that there's lots of red in this horse, right? So right off the bat, visually, this horse, you have no finish. is hard, no finish, lone, lone. It's a lone and no finish. So this is a horse that uh, likes to go to the front, and, you know, sometimes he finishes, sometimes he doesn't. So a horse like this is always vulnerable, uh, as the morning line favorite, especially when there's another horse who has uh, equally good early early speed. So I just want to show you something. If you go to the grid and go to the second call, that's the you know where the horse was in the second call. Now let's go to filter operator help. A lot of things you can do in terms of slicing and dicing uh, data with the grid. The grid is really a great tool for analyzing different things. It, you, there's so many combinations you can use, but I'm going to just look at exclamation point. What does that do? That just tells me that it's like a knot. So I don't want data that doesn't contain the search item. So I want to look at when this horse is not in first place. So I use the exclamation one in the second call. So you can see what happens to this horse. Even when he's close up, uh, things unravel late. Now you can see again, he's those races he's run against better horses than he's running against today. You know, but it's very interesting to show you kind of the way this horse likes to go. And when he doesn't get his way, what happens? He finished off the board in six races when he didn't get the lead the first. So it's very important he gets the lead. So he's going to be committed to the lead. Uh, he has the eight drawn outside. So let's look at the eight in this scenario. Let me just clear out the filters. Let me go to number eight. And the eight is Mr. Kisses, who's six to one in the morning line. 
And you can see he's got, you know, some red here too. He's kind of a horse that likes to go to the front. In fact, in his last five races, he's been on the lead at the second call. Um, and you, again, he's a horse that uh, in, in two occasions when he, he was close up, he kind of faded. So he's another horse that likes the lead. Let's do the same thing we did with the uh, seven where we said if he was not in the lead. Uh, you can see the results are pretty bad. With one exception, he was able to sit behind a, a, three lengths behind the pace, and that looked like a lone horse, and he was able to reel him in. So there's a scenario where maybe he can sit behind this seven and reel him in. Uh, probably, I'm not sure if that's a likely scenario. It's a possible scenario. He's he's six to one. I don't know what tactics, you know, you never know uh, the intention of sometimes the jockeys or the trainers and you know, what else they're, they're trying to accomplish in terms of uh, the race and what they want to get out of it. But the, just to know there is a possibility that that's the case. But you, again, like the seven, when he doesn't make the front, the results usually aren't great. So there's a potential that if he lets the seven go, the seven goes and wins the race, uh, he can sit and maybe reel in the seven. Uh, so those, those, are, those are two possible scenarios. We're going to play another scenario. Let's say these horses eliminate each other essentially by going real fast and we want to see what happens then. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the plot here for a second and start looking at just see if I can evaluate some of these horses quickly on the plot. Uh, when I look at quad stats, uh, you can see that circles in quadrants um, four are, are terrible, right? So I want to look at number three and number six. They're both circles in quadrant four. So let's just flip over to surface and distance. And when I flip it, you know, the seven and eight still look like the horse in the front. A couple of things happen, right? We, we get the now the one, okay? I can just hover over and see that's the one. The six stays a circle and the three uh, switches to a small square. So just off the bat, you know, the six is kind of looks like an elimina elimination, a toss, you know, just based that he's a circle in both, on both scenarios. And then the, uh, the one and the three would be horses I would be kind of concerned with. So we'll look at them. But let's eliminate the six and let's look at the form of the other horses in the race now. So I'm going to start with the number one. Uh, this is really an unknown. This horse was recently gelded. Now he's coming off uh, nearly a three-year layoff. Okay, And when this horse was running his best, he's a stakes place horse sprinting on the turf. Uh, so your guess is as good as mine is what we're going to see here. But you know, horse dropping like this really kind of concerns me off of this layoff. So let's look at the, you can click here, we can get at least a gauge of the morning workouts, the raw times on the workouts to see if there's just anything there. And the concern here when I look at this is just this sporadic work pattern, right? 12 days between the 17th and the 5th, you know, he worked out on 22nd, that's another large spacing, the 30th. You know, I just... Have a hard time now. I mean, you got to love the price on this horse, and you know, uh, twenty to one, and he did win off a layoff, a long layoff before, but nothing like this. This horse is a complete, you know, X factor to us. If there's something else that you're finding in this horse, if you if you know something else about this horse, uh, you know, you maybe you want to kind of get behind them, but right off the bat, I'm just you know, we're just wary of a horse coming off this kind of layoff. Now he is dropping. So let's get a look at him on the track and let's see how he looks um, and, and go from there. Let's go to the number two, Visionary Ruler. Um, you know, this horse looks like he's dropping. But again, another horse, if you look at the optics fit drain, it's great to have these optics fit drain. It's really not a class drop. So uh, an eight-year-old who ran a C, and we don't like this term ouchie, right? This is, you know, physically this horse probably didn't look the, the best to our, our note taker. And, you know, he's, he's got good connections and, you know, he's good, the, this is the kind of horse that's going to get played. But, um, you know, another horse that, that doesn't make us feel warm and fuzzy, you know, especially at that price. Um, the next horse we want to evaluate is the three. That was a horse that was a circle in one uh, filter and a, a little small square in another. Uh, this horse, again, here's an ouchie uh, off a win at 12.5. When he was in the Rodriguez barn, I guess they got reclaimed back by the tr the, uh, the, the uh, trainer that used to have him. And then what we get is a vet scratch. So we had an ouchie and a vet scratch off a win. And now the horse is in for uh, a higher level. You can see in the, in the case of him, the optics figure range is actually higher. So this is a horse that, um, 
we're going to probably let beat us in this scenario. So it's six to one. Let's go to the four, and that's Cracklin John. Now, Cracklin John is, uh, was entered for 25. And again, it looks like the fig range was the same, but he ran a 90, ran a good race, kind of an even race, it looked like to us. Off of, it was a very fast pace. So uh, this race was a, was a solid race. Uh, see if we have any extended comments. He pushed pace setting winner, lost ground on him off the turn. But he could be like in a position, uh, you can see this horse kind of usually runs near the front, but he could be, be a horse that maybe is ahead of the rest of the pack. And they're behind those two horses that are going at it. And he may be in a good position to kind of pick up pieces uh, behind those two horses as they uh, turn for home. Uh, you could see that in his last race, he was uh, love having this scratch information in the grid. He was scratched a main track only. So they try to sneak him into a race at five furlongs, which is interesting, right? Today's race is shorter. It's five and a half than, than his previous race, which was at six. And it was a stakes race, so they had some confidence. Now, really, they were hoping that the race gets scratched off and they can get a check, but still, it shows a little bit of confidence entering it in that race because um, you know whoever would be left in a race off the turf is still probably be a good, good horses. Um, so this horse kind of looks like a contender, and again, ten to one is a great morning line in a, in a race like this. And let's see where this horse actually ends up. We're less concerned about a double layoff here, a layoff where a horse gets laid off. You know, more than 45 days, and again, because he was entered in between, so uh, we give him a little bit more of a, a break on that. Case. So we think the four, you know, 10 to 1 is a definite contender. And then the other horse that we wanted to evaluate, the other contender that we think is the five, uh, Brio Man, ran on the grass last time, and uh, that's not his surface. So if we kind of excuse that, there was a vet scratch before that, uh, and, you know, this horse has run fast enough. Uh, to, to kind of win at, at this level. You can see he's, he's done that five furlong. So, you know, the distance, the shorter distance doesn't seem to be an issue for him. Again, he could be one of those horses like the four. He could be sitting off the seven and eight and just kind of be picking up pieces if those two back up. He gets uh, Ortiz for Castellano. And, the, the, you know, this horse was coming off a year layoff in that race, uh, the first race on the turf. So maybe that was kind of used as a prep because let's look at this horse workout pattern versus, you know, like when we looked at the one, um, this horse seems to be really showing some life in the morning. So his last race was on the 17th. Let's see what he's done since the 31st. He was doing four furlongs, four, furl four, four furlong works. And, you know, they just look better than the next. Uh, three out of 68, four out of 62, two out of 15, one out of 18. It just looks like this horse might be doing well in the morning. Again, you know, it's always better to have a clock or report to actually show you how it's doing. But, you know, this raw information could tell you that, you know, the horse has kind of stepped it up in the morning. And uh, I, I like the consistency of the works and I like the uh, the actual works. They, they just look great in four furlong works. Uh, maybe with the switch over to Ortiz too, uh, that, that may, maybe he's on the horse more. don't know. But anyway, we think this horse is a, the, another contender at nine to two. So, just to kind of summarize, looking at this race, you know, it really is all depends on what happens with the seven and eight, how they go at it. Uh, you know, if the eight can sit, uh, you know, again, and the seven is just a horse that wants to give it up. The eight is a possibility at, at a good morning line of six to one. But if not, we think that the four and the five, you can see they're the squares here on surface and distance, you know, may be able to sit off these horses and finish up and maybe pass some tiring horses late. So four, five, and the eight look like horses that the way we would kind of evaluate this race. Uh, and that's it. I mean, there's, again, there's many ways you can do this, many ways you can interpret races like this. This is one of those ways. But again, it, you know, we present the data that enables you to spend more time with the handicapping process than trying to just figure out where things are going to be. So hopefully this was helpful. We'll have more of these. Again, go to opticseq.com and uh, check us out.